Hello viewers! After a lot of larger prints lately, I think it is time for some printer maintenance. In this particular case, I want to talk about belt tensioning. Before we go to the printer and I show you two different ways how to do that, I want to explain to you how the tensioning system on the Sovol SV08 actually works. Because that might be a little bit counterintuitive. If you're not interested in that, please skip ahead to this time code and everyone else please follow me to this one. You have these blue parts on the horizontal axis, they are blue, on the vertical axis they are black, but they work in the same way. Then you have inside this sliding block which houses your idler pulley, where your belt goes around, then you have a adjustment screw and two tightening screws. There's also this spring. This spring actually gives you the tension. Now there comes the kind of hmm, counterintuitive part. If you tighten this adjustment screw clockwise, you suck this green block backwards and therefore make the belt more sloppy. But you put more pressure on the spring. Well, if you tighten it, it moves that way. So that means tight screw equals loose belt. If you now loosen the screw, turn it counterclockwise, this spring extends and puts therefore more pressure on the belt and therefore tightens the belt. So, loose screw equals tight belt. That is a little bit counterintuitive. What we're going to do on the printer is we're going to loosen these set screws so the green block can slide back and forth. Then we loosen this adjustment screw so the spring can exert pressure on that green sliding block and therefore tightening the belt. When we have the right value of tightness, we're going to lock it in place with these set screws. Since I've recorded this entire portion of the video already very successfully without audio, I figured I give it another go. What Sovol wants you to do now is to move this axis until you have a distance of 150 millimeters between the center axis of the steady idler pulley to the movable idler pulley. And they tell you to use a ruler to measure that. Let me tell you, it is way better if you use a caliper. That way you can also see the center point, which is that little shiny spot in the center of each axis, way easier and you can pinpoint it with the corner of the caliper way simpler than trying to eye that up with a ruler. You should measure both sides and make sure that it is 150 millimeter so that this axis is actually square because it could be slightly off center like this if you only measure one side. What I did next, I used some regular electrical tape in order to fix the axis in place so I don't accidentally knock it around. I did the same thing with the print head where I made sure that that one is exactly in the center. After fixing everything in position and making sure that we are square with this axis, we will have to strum the belt and record the frequency with Sovol recommends the Carbon Drive app, which you need to download from your respective app store. But there are apparently other frequency recording apps out there. But I stick with Carbon Drive because 
that's the one Sobol recommends. I will also use such a belt tensiometer later on in order to get a deflection reading because this whole frequency thing is very tedious and I will put my readings from my belt tensiometer and all the values down in the description below so you can use that as a reference point. So next we need to fire up carbon drive. We need to use the motorcycle setting. I just deactivated the microphone because otherwise the thing will record every single thing I say and the frequency and that messes up our readings. Also it is quite tedious in that app if you get a wrong reading in between when you like knocked your printer or accidentally touched the microphone on your, uh, on your phone you will have to manually delete every single one so that it doesn't mess up your overall average frequency. We are aiming for 110 Hertz average frequency. So what you will have to do is you put your phone with the microphone near the belt, somewhat like that. And then you strum the belt as if you play a guitar. You do that several times and then you get a reading, several single readings and the app will calculate the average frequency. According to the Sobel manual you are allowed to have a 10 Hz deviation plus and minus overall. So that means your Hz range can go from 105 to 115. What I try to aim for is that the left side and the right side are equal. To me it's more important that they are equal within the range than that they hit 110 Hertz bang on. So if I would have 107 on the left and 107 on the right, I would call that good. And the next thing is we need to adjust. The adjustment works as followed. These are the two set screws. We need to loosen them and then we can use this screw in between here in order to tighten or loosen the belt. And remember, when you tighten the screw, it loosens the belt. And when you loosen this screw, it tightens the belt. According to the manual, is half a turn of the adjusting screw in between the belts, so from bottom to top, gives you an adjustment of 30 Hertz in frequency. Oh, hey, future Dom here. I cocked that up. One full revolution of the tensioning screw gives you an adjustment of 30 Hertz up or down. That's why I said if I hit 107 on the left and 107 on the right, I'll call that good as long as it's within the range. Because trying to get 3 Hertz with the adjustment of that screw, that's a lot of fiddling around. But as I said, it needs to be equal on both sides because you don't want to have the belt too tight on one side and too loose on the other because that can potentially pull the entire axis like this. And in order to check that, that that didn't happen, when you're done with adjusting everything, You are actually supposed to push that all the way back to the zero position and see that it is all parallel, that it hits those two blue brackets in the back with both sides of these brackets in the front. In my case, with this tensiometer, which has um, five newtons of force, and when you are within the range of 105 to 115 hertz, you get a deflection of six millimeters. 
This is now 6.01 on one side, 6.08 on the other side. So I would say that is pretty good. What you're supposed to do after this procedure, you move this axis back and forth a couple times, check that it is parallel, move it back to the 150 millimeter position and double check your belt tension. Quite tedious, but also at some point necessary. In the Sovol manual, they show you the adjustment of the set axis belt when the set axis posts are detached from the printer. But you can obviously do that while the printer is assembled. What they want you to do is to move the flying gantry to a position so you have 150 millimeter distance from the center of this steady pulley which is in here to the top of that black bracket where the belt is clamped tight. That is really stupid to measure. However, I can let you know that in my case, from the underside of this bracket to the top of this black bracket where the belt is tightened to makes out in my case 125 millimeters. As soon as you have that in place, and once again, you have to make sure that you measure all four corners so that your flying gantry is not somehow crooked in there. Then you can once again use your carbon drive app or whichever other app you use and start strumming your belt. This time we are aiming for 140 hertz. In order to adjust the belt tension, you have once again two set screws, one here and one there. And the adjustment screw is in between here. It's pretty fiddly to get to, but it is doable. In my case, I had a hard time to get a good reading with my phone because I constantly knocked something or the whole structure wobbled a little bit when I tried to strum the belt and it got all kinds of weird readings, some ranging from 21 hertz to 187 hertz. So after googling a bit, going through several forums and running the values of the belt and the free distance and everything through Croc and giving him the values from the Sovol SV08 manual and the values from my little tool here, it came out that I have to aim for a deflection of this belt between 5.9 and 7.9 millimeters. And then I will lie within the range that Sovol recommends. In my opinion, it is way easier to clamp this tool here then trying to figure it out with your phone, which you then hold there and you strum along and it's kind of silly. Um, these things are not really expensive. They are well worth the money in my opinion. But yeah, everyone has to decide that for themselves. Yeah, you do the same procedure. You loosen the two set screws. You use the screw in between here in order to tighten or loosen your belt. You do that in all four corners and once again make sure that they are equal. That's more important than hitting one side bang on and therefore the other side is a little bit too sloppy. Everything that is equal then your motors will pull in the same fashion and your gantry stays nice and level and your stepper motors can calculate that in the software or your software can calculate the movement of your stepper motors accordingly. Well, SV08 belt tensioning procedure. A little bit annoying, somewhat tedious, but at some point also necessary, even though it's a little bit of pain in the butt. I would recommend to get a belt tensiometer and make yourself familiar with it. I'm gonna put all my measurements and results in the description below. So you guys have that as a reference point and can start from there. I also got something delivered the other day 
which might be an interesting option for the budget conscious printer models on, amongst you, or it is just a piece of garbage. But we will figure that out in the next video. See you next time.